There we ah, go. Okay. okay. <laughs> okay, this is my husband. Okay. Wait. Hello. Hi. 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 Yes, I know. Hello, 807 Voodoo, AK. Hello. Are we live, people? Somebody has to tell us if we're Hello. live. Hello. Tell us if we're live because this is way too complicated for Trish us. And I never understand this crap. If I have blonde hair, yeah. we're in the right video. Exactly. If Katie has blonde hair, we're in the right video. Okay. Yay! Yay! You know, we, we were on the same show, and we were on the same show for uh, almost an entire season, and we never had any scenes together. And it started with stunt fight. We, You know, we both looked at each other like, she's playing the, the tough tomboy chick, and I'm playing the primped up whatever. When we started practicing together, we were like, dude, you're cool. We're kind of cut from the same cloth. Like, Trish and I both grew up in small towns. Hers a lot smaller than mine, but, you know, we grew up in small towns, and I think that we got to the very end where there was a stunt, and, and they weren't going to let us do the stunt, and Trish and I are both looking at each other going, we just fought each other for, like, an entire day, and you're not going to let us do a stunt, and crap. Then we started riding motorbikes together, and and it's just we've become such buddies since, so... yeah. Um, I love this girl. Yay, I love her too. We are outlaws, side by side. There's a twist in the tail of the rising tide. Girl, you know I got New Orleans on my mind. You got my back. We got a Outlaws thing came about when Trisha was sent a script um, about four years ago that was addressed to kind of both of us in a way about the Van Buren story about Adelaide and Augusta Van Buren and they're the first two women to ride cross country on motorcycles in 1916. They actually weren't the first but they were we learned that. Oh um, shit that's right we did. Yes. Oh, but the other ones were mother and daughter, right? The, the other ones were mother and daughter. And, and she one was, was in sidecar. Side Hello. So the first that rode singly across. Yes, yes. yes. So Trish and I kind of um, got that story in our heads and wanted to do that story, and we planned on doing that. And then, you know, the story was really long, and we couldn't, we couldn't um, get everything going in time. So Trish and I, we, what we ended up doing was um, we decided maybe we should do like a shorter ride. And at the same time, the Gulf spill had happened. And so we thought, you know, maybe we'll just recreate the Easy Rider route. Los Angeles to Louisiana. And every single year, we're going to do <laughs> a different ride for a different charity. What? <laughs> I got a guy comes here from London, pollutes the whole Gulf. I gotta watch him on TV saying, I still got 80% left, I can go fish. You know what, that 80% don't have the stuff. Right. The 20% where everything's at. Help all of the fishermen that are wiped out. Who knows for how long? Help the people here. You've destroyed all of our wetlands. You've destroyed all of our way of life. What do you think, we're a bunch of idiots? We we're really fortunate to be the uh, official nonprofit partner of the Voodoo Experience, which is a great New Orleans festival that brings in a, just a wide array of music and a great group of fans here to New Orleans. And uh, we've worked with them for a while now. Uh, and what we have been working to do really is to educate the people who come to the festival and the musicians who play the festival about what's going on with Louisiana's coastal wetlands crisis and now the BP oil drilling disaster. Katie Sackhoff and Trisha Helfer rode motorcycles from L.A. to New Orleans. They called it the La La Ride uh, to Louisiana. And they came to Voodoo, rode into Voodoo, and the entire way they were raising awareness about the Gulf and reminded the nation that uh, it ain't over. You know, that the oil's still here and that we still need a commitment to the recovery. Uh, and they, they were fantastic and they were a lot of fun and I think care passionately about this region. And, you know, I think what ties it all together is that New Orleans is special, the Gulf Coast is special, it's unique, 
It's known for its food. It's known for its music, uh, and the fact that a you know a music festival gets that without the wetlands, they can't do what they do, and that the musicians get that you know they are the folks who are the guardians of this 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 unique culture and this heritage. Show them a couple of things about their route. Are we crossing through like an Indian reservation? Like? Well, <laughs> my idea was just you just spend as much time on Route 66 as possible because it's A, cool. Somebody farted. B, it's a dog, I'm sure. Um, when you ride off-road, anytime you ride off-road on these bikes, turn the ABS off. Girls and boys. Oh, right. And then on the back, make it back a little bit bigger. Because when the ABS is on, you're not going to be able to stop. It will, you're going to hit whatever you thought you were going to not hit. Aww. <laughs> How cute is that? Yeah. I think it'd be cute. Put Nelly in it. Oh, let's put Nelly in it. Can she do it? Nelly. Strain a disc. Don't strain your disc, yeah. There you go. You got it. Watch your feet. Find that body position. Good. There you go. Good job. Okay, now I can do it. Was I, was I under it? You were too far under it, I yeah, think. Although, Trisha, I could see the veins in your head <laughs> popping. <laughs> I know I was there. Right. I know. Well, luckily, both Hopefully Katie and I can somewhat afford it right now. You're we're invest, both, so you guys can, we're investing you, you guys, in Right, you guys can totally right. afford it. You can afford to do it. I'm just telling you, you know, it's not like you, you'll be fine. So. Which is why it's mm -hmm. her and me and Josh going across on bikes with no support because we can't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon me? We'll probably have a few more of those yet today. I might, yeah. Oh. So Trisha and I ride ahead. The walkie-talkies are 36 miles. Right. Okay. Woohoo! But we would just stop, pull over, and be like, hey, where the hell are you right. guys? Right, yeah. Right. <laughs> I read that one website that thought that really wanted, oh, it was all about you getting Trisha out to the desert. What? It was like a lesbian website. It's like, oh, oh so Katie's really right? trying to get Trisha out to yes. the desert. That's, that's, what, that's, what, that's what they call it. Yes. Oh, that was on clothes. That's going to be awesome. I can hear you. Testing. We're all connected. Now we know it. Financially, that's the one way we can convince each other, but we always were. It's one giant ocean. We might call it different names, but the water spills into the water, and that water spills into us. And you should care because wherever you are right now, something's spilling into you. Hey, we're about to get suited up. I'm getting nervous. <laughs> Yeah, do, do you want to simply drop the bikes right here? <laughs> 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 if we drop the bikes right here, at least there's someone else. Let's get them up. <laughs> I know. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
there to prove a point, right? Right. Okay, it's all about proving a point and showing you can do it. Yeah. Right. I'm getting zipped in. I feel like I'm going to space. The good thing about BMW gear is you can cinch it up so you look like a girl. <laughs> well, kind of a kind of a girl. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty. We could hike up there. You could hike up there. I'll watch it. How far do you think I get before I turn around tired <laughs> in our that motorcycle? tree right there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get bit by a snake. <laughs> she, she's gonna fall and hurt herself. <laughs> Acai berry. The acai berry, which is sort of like vodka, but it has a berry flavor. We has, we started out really with some heavy weather. When we, we joined, when the 60 joined the 10, whew, we went through some rain. We actually had to pull over and put on some rain gear because Wait, it was... You have to see what we put on. We put these on. We put slickers on, which seems like a good idea because you're dry. But what they don't tell you is you've now become a parasail. <laughs> <laughs> we literally after we got through the rain and we got on to um the 62 we turned off and we went yes. on the 62 and a beautiful winding road it was the sun was out but the wind came out and all of a sudden it blew me into the next lane and <laughs> i saw oh, her go shit yeah and um literally the, we had to drive for about probably about five miles yeah with the bike literally leaned to the side to, in order to go straight. You need help. Got it. Um, so we're going to actually get to go out to the spill site and we're going to film some of it. And we're so we're very excited about actually being able to, you know, this whole ride is about that and be able to actually culminate not only at the festival, but also by going out on the boat excursion. Acting outlaws. I've been up since 6.30 looking at tourist <laughs> folders 
um, to know exactly where we're going. She's good. I've been up to the 17. And, and I wrote all our directions out and I put them in Trisha's iPad case because it's waterproof. And that Katie bought in, for me. I'm going to tuck it in my jacket. And, um, and so we don't get lost at all. So there's none of the... Trisha, are you sure it was the 60 East? Are you, wait, are you sure? Are we going to Los Angeles or are we going to... Shit. Damn it. Are, where are we going? <laughs> Trisha, maybe you should lead, because I don't know. And I've streamlined my packing process. I'm three less bungee cords than yesterday. It's gonna move a little bit, but it's on. That's all that matters. And I'm putting my waterproof case on, because I think from from talking talking to the locals, I know all the, the back roads today, and that we're gonna hit rain. So <laughs> everything is gonna be snug as a bug in a rug, as my dad would say. Milk thistle. We'll close them in. Multi. Crack. Oh crap, what did we do with the, the emergency packs? No, oh, I know. That's I'm so stupid for not bringing the lens in there. Wow. Oh, what are those? I'm not good with cables on a good day. And we're heading to um, we're gonna go see the Grand Canyon. And we're also hopefully going to go see some big cats at a cat cat sanctuary. Thank you guys. Oh, fantastic. Yes, please. And then um, thank you for all the directions. Oh, no problem. And when we get um, to Oatman, we just, it'll, we'll know where to go, right? Yeah, there'll be a sign that tells you to turn in everything, so. Perfect. Okay. Fantastic. You're thank welcome. you for the help with yes, the directions. You're welcome. Thank Bye -bye. you. We guys have a good trip. Bye. Cats. Wow. Serval. Oh wow. Is the park privately owned? Yes. And at the moment we have 166 animals. Wow. wow. Yeah. They're all rescued. And you know we have two tigers that somebody was trying to raise in an apartment in Minnesota. You're kidding. No. We have uh, Slash from Guns N' Roses. Have you heard of that right. band? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have his cougar. He bought it for a music video, took it home, it took a swipe at his girlfriend. So now we have it. <gasps> That's Willie. Willie, talk to you. Hi, Willie. Hi. I'll take that one. Oh. You got that look on your face. That what you guys doing? <laughs> hey, buddy. Come back out. <laughs> look, look, look at the way he's looking at you. <laughs> Show me your face. <gasps> Thank you. Oh, that was. Oh. <laughs> I like animals more than people. Me too. <gasps> eat here instead of at the Roadkill Cafe. I picked this place instead of the Roadkill one for Trisha. I figured Roadkill would be a... A no-no. A no-no for the tea dog. When we started getting passed by the trucker, I was like, okay, we're going 72 miles an hour and being passed by a semi in the rain. And the water clutch. <laughs> the water was like, I was like, 
my glove is soaked all the way through from trying to wipe the rain off my visor. So I couldn't see at the end, so I had to put my visor up. So I was just oh get, so getting the wind and uh, rain, and then I couldn't see out of my goggles. So a hot shower. Trish and I made a decision to skip the Grand Canyon today because it's so cold and we couldn't see anything and it's raining. So what we're gonna do is add, we're gonna backtrack 30 miles tomorrow, head up to the Grand Canyon, which is an hour up supposedly, see the Grand Canyon, come back down, and so it'll make our 279 mile day tomorrow about 405. If the weather is sunny, we're gonna make a huge day out of it. My father would be so proud here, this, this rule of you pack it, you carry it. A few Knocking wrinkles, on wood. a few wrinkles are earned. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> we all get old. What's Canada wrong with just old? told you to F off. <laughs> Our statement on this is also why we are working with the GRN, the Golf Restoration Network, is because they've been around for 16 years. And that's that's one of the that's their focus is not only about saying yes we need to do more renewable energy um, we need to start moving that way uh, my husband and I are start uh, you know eventually building a greenhouse in in Alberta um, we're working on it very slowly but you know everybody needs to start doing more so that that is a given at this point um, but it's there there a lot of their focus is about really making sure that the regulations are there and that the public gets the right information and they don't get the sugar-coated stuff or the stuff that's kind of hidden, the information that's hidden. Oh, the oil's, the oil's all dispersed. It's fine. And so the whining begins. The whining. You said you were whining yesterday, but you didn't whine too much. No. I mean, it's a beautiful day, um, and it's amazing to me. Like when you stopped, it like doesn't seem like it's that windy. Like, you look at the trees, and they're just like, oh, it's nice and windy, but not that bad. And then you get on the road, and it's like, oh. Trisha saw a sign that said Grand Canyon South Road, 29 miles. So it's only 29 miles. Grand Canyon today. I grew up with ants in my house. They don't scare me. <laughs> we left Butte, Montana 43 days ago. What? We left Butte, Montana 43 days ago. We're headed to Yuma. Are you? Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, we stopped working the truck stops. Uh, Polishing rims and tanks on big trucks. Yeah. That's how I found out my trip. That's really cool. But in uh, four and a half years, we got almost 40,000 miles on the road. Are you serious? This is my fourth bike and my third trailer. I wear them out kind of quick. <laughs> As close to the Grand Canyon as we're gonna get, sadly, but we have 215 more miles to do today. But we figured we should at least come see it. So there it is. There it is. There's, there's part, part of it. That's there's part of the South Rim. Thank you, Desert. Here we come. Woo! -hoo! This is why we have to protect our planet. Seriously, I'm like almost falling over right now from the wind. I'm just <laughs> Lean against me. Here's just like my. Oh, that works. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my God, it's getting windier. All right, we're off to beat the the wind and those clouds. Those clouds. We want to outrace the clouds. So hi and bye, Grand Canyon. Bye, Grand Canyon.
We realized that we were riding on BMW bikes. Motorcycles are energy efficient vehicles. Everybody knows that we have to become more energy efficient. And Katie and I are both taking our own personal steps to do that. We need to be accountable for what we do. You know, there are 1,600 abandoned oil rigs just in the Gulf of Mexico right now. A number of them are leaking, whether they're leaking a, a tablespoon a day or 15 gallons a day. It's too much. BP says the oil spill's over. I don't think this is over. This is disgusting. There's tons of this stuff. And uh, it just breaks your heart. We've been out here in this marsh all our life. Fishing, hunting, making a living, recreation. This is what we left with. We want to raise awareness. We don't want people to forget because our our society and our our news media have an ability to to change topics and, and lose stamina and, and speed on topics that are important. We're just saying everybody take their steps and everybody be aware. That's all it was about. Baby steps every day, people. We're not Baby saying change steps. the world. We're saying turn Baby a light off. Steps. Turn a light off. You're you're awesome. It was so massive that you could, it, I actually think it was painting. And then the rain stopped, and then the wind signals were like wind sails. And they're like, whoo! Yeah, it, it better show up on video, but the funny thing about rain is it doesn't really show up on video very well. Yeah. It Which was, is the misnomer whenever it rains on film in a movie, it's actually a rain machine dumping water on the people because <laughs> rain doesn't show up unless it's like hail or something. Anyway, so we're freezing. It's, it's, um, it's supposed to get really cold tonight. But Trisha and I already saw that there's a Mexican place across the street and we love margaritas. Tequilas! After rides. It's called Tequilas and that's where we're all gonna go eat Red tonight. hot. And um, after a hot shower. After power, a hot shower and you stream. And you stream, we're gonna go, or we're gonna go eat and, and then, then come back, back and you stream. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's gonna we be interesting. We landed Gary Mraz from Quick, Quick Throttle. Throttle. And then we hit the desert, Roy's, and it was yeah. like 100 degrees. Yeah. We were then like t-shirts. Yeah, then we peeled everything off. And then we get back in, into Arizona, and it's freaking raining. They were in the rain with us, and, and I said to him, and when we finished, I said, I was, I was, as we were driving, I was actually thinking to myself, no one's ever again going to say, and then Trish and I aren't like serious riders after that. And he goes, I seriously was watching you two going, holy crap, they're actually doing it. So, yes. 
So we did it, and we went through some amazing country today. Oh. Amazing, 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 amazing. Arizona and, and New Mexico are absolutely gorgeous. There's so much open space. I'm, I'm starting to wonder why everyone lives on top of each other in big cities. It makes no sense to me other than convenience. What was that big rock thing? I, de I don't know It was like name. right out of a science fiction it, movie. You know what it looked like? It looked like the castle in um, Alice, in, no, in um, Wizard of Oz, the bad castle where yeah. the woman goes and all the monkeys fly in. It looked like it that. It looked like that. That's why yeah. I kept kind of kind of weaving all over the lane and so going slow because I, I just couldn't take my eyes off this Arizona, rock. In Arizona, flat. One, and then, it, but one side of the, the, literally one whole side of the road was red and then the other side was all green. So that was our day. And we yeah. got followed around by animals at the grocery store because we ate lunch in a parking lot. Oh, there's so many animals. They're, they're just like one There's so many stray animal. animals in Arizona and in New Mexico. It, I think it's just the Indian Reservation is just swarming with with stray animals. Well, no, it's all dogs and cats and nobody neuters their pets. So right. they seemed like they were somewhat taken care they're of. They seem taken care of. They just seem like they're taken care of as strays. Like they kind of like everyone takes care of the strays in the neighborhood because there's so many. And uh, it was just... But they were all so sweet. You just wanted to take every single one of them home. I know. So I wanted to like grab two of the dogs and throw them in the car. I almost had the cat kitten inside my coat. It would have stayed too. Yeah, but you would have it gotten It just ringworm. wanted. It just wanted love. I would have got rid of the ringworm, and I would have got rid of the ringworm on the cat. I wouldn't <laughs> let you touch me. <laughs> Shiprock is. I've never seen a picture of it before. I don't know how I can live in the states since I was 17 years old and not see a picture it, of Shiprock. It looks like the castle of the bad witch from um, Wizard of Oz, like the with like the pokes all over the place and like all black. That's exactly what it looks like. And it's far off in the distance, and it looks like this. I don't know what she's talking, referring about, but it looks like it's out of a sci-fi thing, whatever. And you've never seen the Wizard of Oz, where she clicks her heels together with her red ruby slippers. I, I mean, me. You've never I grew up seen it. a TV. We're off to see the Wizard, the wonderful Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Um, um, we have to get up early. Yes. And I have to go check my hotel for bed bugs. Oh. oh I'm so scared. Okay, we're not going to say where we are. Because no, don't. Disgusting. You can't say where we are, but I'm going to totally. <sighs> I got to go search I'm my bed. I'm sleeping in I'm everything I can tonight. I'm so scared. Excuse me, I'm in a really bad mood. Yo, where's your room? That was my room. Do you see the door right next to it? Every time that door opened, and every time those people upstairs would take a step, my whole world would shake. There was a guy standing out here that had supposedly been kicked out of the club um, and decided to stand here and kick every single thing that could be moved all over the parking lot. And this is like a 25-year-old guy, by the way. And then when he, that was done and all the stuff had been kicked everywhere, um, and everyone standing in the parking lot was just laughing. And then when that was done, he started kicking the wall. That's what he was doing. And then he was knocking on my window, and I finally called security. 101. So you called. I called security. And I was like, and who'd they send down? The guy who stands at the front of the club to let people in. <laughs> that was security. Just to infuriate the guy more. Right. Who had just kicked him out. I'm really glad we have a short ride today. I'm really glad that I don't have to come back to this hotel in Farmington, New Mexico anytime soon. I would say traveling on a budget is doable, but unfortunately not very relaxing. Had we not had reservations though, we could have gone to any hotel last night. So I think that's um, a lesson. And then also, not for nothing, but, you know, something else that we've learned is that when you have hotel reservations, it doesn't give you the freedom to change your itinerary. I just said you were slow. Really? 
Yeah. I'm sorry, I was gawking at the cute little kids. What do you want from me? <laughs> that oh, there's another biological one. Click? It's a biological clock. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to be pregnant in like six months. <laughs> and, and I'm not. I'm scared for the day off because I think my body's going to realize how sore it is. Well, right? Actually, I'm not, a, I'm not a sore today, but I thought I was going to be. Can you I need to learn how to ride with an iPod. wonder what's going on in my mind while I'm riding that. <laughs> She doesn't even have music on. <laughs> I don't even have music this on. This what you're like. <laughs> <laughs> you need a stirrup to get on your bike. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's exactly lack of sleep last night is catching up to us so we're happy it's a short it was a shorter day we got here in relatively blue skies and um, early enough to unpack and get a little workout in okay it's all right I got it <coughs> this is like high altitude training by the way yes it is it's like 7,000 feet my breathing's like crazy it's squishy. You can do sit-ups on it. You put it in the small of your back. Oh, okay. And you do sit-ups. So it's you like can a also, mini Bosu. You can squeeze it with your thighs. And by the way, I have a six-pack now from riding the motorcycle for two days. We just finished a 218-mile day. It's the shortest day that we have this entire trip. As Katie was saying, she's getting really good abs from having to pull the heavy bike up. The bike weighs over 600 pounds, and it's loaded. Just pick it up off the kickstand, not off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we haven't dropped them. You're an hour early. Oh my god, we're at 8.30. 8.30 this time. Shit, we're an hour early. Fuck. Damn it. That's why there's only 162 people. Are we gonna sit? We can't sit here for an hour. We tried so hard to make it. <laughs> we were so happy we were on time. Oh my god! Oh. <laughs> this is fantastic. Oh god, I'm crying now. You know, you you had tears in your eyes today because we drove through such beautiful country. Yeah. I didn't have the electronics bag and the bag of food, I'd be all right. It's gonna be an interesting day. Right, Trisha? Yes, we're both, uh, we're both a little concerned. Because 35 mile an hour winds. Is I've written the directions down, put them inside a plastic bag, and I'm going to tape them, maybe right here. Because we're we're riding that. through streets today called um, um oh. to come carry and um lesbia lesbia you'll know when it's dangerous when you're shit in your pants right. <laughs> <laughs> that's when you pull off you're like i think we should probably stop and for a little while sit in the ditch and wait <laughs> just yeah. kind of chill it out you okay. know because if you go too slow then the wind that's where it'll fuck with you
it's best when you have those little things where it says turn right in four miles and yeah, you're like okay yeah, but we did that just coming here and it yeah. sent us way to hell off in the wrong place in santa fe yeah well, so that's why i have one but when i used it when we were in san, uh, san francisco and the field ride it's like it tells you too late yeah especially when you got people following yeah. and you're like yeah. even if you can make you know it's just so anyway all right Let's all right see we're your great. Pants. All right, you'll make it. Are you guys right. heading back? Or yeah, we're, we're heading gonna back. Go ahead, we're going to go back this way. All right. Head towards right. Phoenix. We're off again. Good journey. Okay, we're off again. good journey. Right. Soldier. Good journey. <laughs> Have fun. Bye, guys. All right. Bye. See you later. We'll watch you tonight. <laughs> when we get there. You'll get there. <laughs>inside and look at the map and see if there's smaller roads to take because when we're going 30 miles an hour it seems okay you're able to focus on and go with the bike anything faster than that it feels like it I mean, the gusts are so strong it feels like it's just gonna throw you and with the semis out there I just don't feel safe on the freeway you know I'm in one way going some speed feels safer than being too slow right because you got more power to the bike but it's it's just the point of being with all the other cars and, right. the, and the trucks that just keep go going. There was a guy that just walked inside and he was literally staring at us like we're insane. And if truckers are looking at us like we're insane, I think we're insane. So we're gonna go figure it out. If, if we go 50 miles an hour at 375 miles left, we're seven hours away from Amarillo. Does it, does it behoove us to just stay here and wait it out? Because we're going 200 miles six hours of risk out of our way. Not if there's 70 mile an hour winds down there. She said 70 mile an hour winds. I don't trust her. Seven, I said I don't trust her. 70 mile an hour winds. That's a big tornado. I know. There'd be a tornado watch if there's 70 mile an hour winds. Um, well, there is basically. <laughs> there isn't. They haven't put out a tornado watch. I think they, when, when do they put out tornado watches? At 60, 50? Basically hurricane. What, what, <laughs> what level hurricane are we in? <laughs> Just without the, oh fuck, okay, I don't know what to do. The problem is, is the more we sit here, the more tired I get. Oh, there's no interest in driving right now. It's, it's just trying to stay on the road. It's trying to keep the bike upright. There's nothing interesting about it. Well, that's kind of my point. I just want to accomplish something today, and then tomorrow it will, instead of a 375-mile day or whatever it is, it'll be a 475-mile day. Or we separate tomorrow, too, and we give ourselves, we use our extra Dallas day. Right. We, we jump on the 104, and we stop at all the main or towns. Or we go up and go to Springer. And we can just stay in Vegas. Yeah, no, I know, I just, you know. I just don't want to go through back surgery again. <laughs> Been there. <laughs> I don't want to fuck it up. But like the guy said, they've never heard of a bike going over and just went. I almost went over one of those times. You know, I know he said that, but at the same time, my aunt and uncle almost ran over a guy who came around a corner and a gust of wind took him and knocked him down and he broke his leg. And they almost ran over him. So I know it's happened.
you know what I mean? She's a nurse. She helped him. She helped him while the ambulance got there. So. Right. say one uh, corporation to another and stuff and just to leave everybody you know yeah well you know, that's what the charity that we're raising money for the golf restoration right. network that's their well, focus you have to you know drill but we need alternative stuff yeah yeah no, it's that's true. the first thing very true yet very true right yeah right. we'll get true. you guys a check okay yeah. i'll that's be right nice. back that's yeah. really nice sure that's cool man what a sweet man yeah so sweet all it takes is one person to like restore your faith in humanity what needs to happen here, by the way. No, I wonder what happened to that. Nothing, you didn't do anything to no. it. You'd think I dropped it, but I didn't. If you dropped it, there would have been marks. Yeah. And I would have laughed. That's true, too. That was our toughest day yet. 
You know what's weird though is that I was more scared riding in that rain the other day. Yeah, and I wasn't. I, and we got a little off roading in. These bikes. That was fun. That was These so bikes fun. fucking rock. I'll yeah. say that again without the word. These bikes rock. These bikes are freaking rock. The first 40 miles, I felt I wasn't in control. And I imagined my bike just dropping. We're victim to the road. I mean, we just realized when we got to Amarillo that we just gained another hour. So now it's like 10 million o'clock here. And it's 8.30 here. It's 8.30 here and we are really exhausted. exhausted. We've been up since what, six? We've been up since six and we had the toughest day yet. Hi. <laughs> Good morning. Did I sleep in? Yes. Sorry. 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 <laughs> I'm really, really fucking tired. Really quick. <laughs> that sucks. I wish I had slept till my alarm. But I didn't. I think I'm getting old. Today is a full day of freeway straight on one freeway all the way into Dallas. It's 350 miles, which is what we did yesterday. But yesterday actually kept you awake because you were so like tense. Um, this is um, this is gonna be different. This is gonna be <coughs> boring. And that's why I have my music because I'm prepared to be absolutely bored to the tits. <laughs> battled out all the way across oh. uh, Texas. Really? Yesterday, yeah. It was... Yesterday was bad everywhere. Yeah. Today's good. Yeah, well, Today good. is like nothing compared to what yeah. that was. I mean, that was like, we were scared. <laughs> yeah. right. so we've been, been kind of following your progress, so That's great. hopefully the hopefully you're on the downhill as far as weather and that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're watching it. It was moving northeast, right? So mm -hmm. yeah. You know, here to Dallas, I'd be pretty smooth sail. Yeah. The only thing about this is that it's just straight and flat, and like yeah. you know, since it's yeah, hot today. today. Yeah, yeah, today, straight and flat. So it's just you know, mm -hmm. get there basically. Well, from here to Dallas too, kind of like y'all been talking trucks. This is a major truck routes. That's the first time my butt's hurt. It's yeah, like, like me too. It's finally catching up to me. I know. Just from sitting for so long. <laughs> yeah, my eyes, I gotta get a I was tired like that yesterday. That's how I felt yesterday. Yeah. Like just falling asleep. Falling asleep and my eyes are controlling me. I don't know how the Van Buren's did it in 1916 without any pharmaceuticals like Zyrtec. We are view streaming at 6.30 with fans that show up to the hotel. We are going to do an hour Ustream as a group meet and greet with you guys. And, and if um, there's nobody, we're just gonna say hi and then go back on at a later ourselves. time when it makes sense for everybody else. Hello. Hello. Lucky people. <laughs> say your name. I'm Haley. Kiara. Alana. 
Jeremy. Patricia. Michelle. Michelle. Katie. Patricia. <laughs> Hi. I think I got you guys. <laughs> See, every time this stops, I get worried. See, it stopped. This is a family friendly thing, by the way. Which, thank you for last night, a bunch of you texting to donate. That was fantastic. Yes. I'm like, thank you. Now you're in my underarm. <laughs> I don't know if this is working, Katie and Trisha. I just got out of a midterm and ducked into a computer lab to catch you guys live. <laughs> That's pretty cool. You know what's funny? That last night I sat down and we were at the restaurant and we yes. ordered food awesome. and I had a conversation with the guy whose name was Juan Manuel. Um, and then I shifted over and Trisha sat in my spot and he started talking to Trisha like it was me. <laughs> Michelle and I went to New Orleans this past April. It was her first time in New Orleans and we love that city. Isn't it great? And we took our very first swamp tour. It was fantastic. They took us to the very back where they said, this is the real bayou because the yeah. other is man-made. Right. Take you to the back, opened up, and it was gorgeous. Yeah. The wild irises were starting to bloom and, I, and we had crawfish down there continually. And I said, oh, wow, I bet I took my last crawfish for a long time. Yeah. So we were scared about that. The bayous are actually losing a, fit, a football field every 30 minutes. Getting, oh getting, it's actually being um, buried by water. It's going to be at the Voodoo Festival. Are you guys going to take the stage? <gasps> are you going to maybe do a little duet? No. No. I don't sing in public. <laughs> she sings. You don't want to hear me sing. <laughs> At this point, you know, I'm, I'm excited. I'm really excited to get into New Orleans. It's just the fact of you're, you're reaching your destination. It's like yeah. a little kid that's getting close to the candy store. You know, you want to you wanna get there and fulfill what you've set out to do. There's a, there's a lot of, you know, excitement and hope on our ride. And then to, a lot of emotion put yeah. into it, not only from the ride itself, but the planning of it. And yeah, we've been planning this for a year. Well, not this particular ride, but seven months, eight months, the BP oil spill happened eight months ago. Right. So we, it's really been about the last month and a half that we've been so focused on it and working at the same time. Time seems to slow down a little bit when you're on the side roads and and you also have less traffic, which is safer, and, uh, and you get to see, see the beauty. We are heading out on a beautiful day to New Orleans with a stop through Baton Rouge, so kind of exciting. Um, I'm going to start to get the butterflies in my belly when we get close. To the guy that to the guys not, that had been riding longer, the guys who had been riding longer, but the guys who who we leaned on when we had questions about riding, you know, like tire pressure, stupid things, like tire pressure and gas, and you know, do you fill up now or do you do this or? You but know, luckily what about we were wind? on BMW bikes that yeah. like didn't break down. Yeah, no, they told us everything.
believe it. We are at the Moody Music Festival, the back of the Moody Music Festival, with a cool ass police escort. That was awesome. We made it, everybody. We made it. And I don't even know. I need a beer. <laughs> I need a beer. <laughs> I need a drink. Yay! Yay! We made it! We made it! That was fun. I know. That was really fun. Doing it next year? Yes. that was already critical has now been compounded by all this vegetation loss when we when we get the next tropical system coming through here all of that will probably wash away you know and that's all around you know the entire coastline just about where all of the oil came in about 950 miles of coast have been impacted by by crude oil and the type, you know, it's interacting with all sorts of different types of ecosystems. Clearly, marsh has gotten hit hard here in Louisiana. Uh, you know, some barrier islands also, uh, you know, beach in some areas. But most of the impacts were Louisiana, and most of that is, is this type of marsh. The question will be, and at this point we still haven't answered it, you see some green shoots, but do we, we don't know what's happened to the, to the root system. The productivity of an estuary, uh, the single most product, productive area, and most you know, fishermen will tell you this, this is where you catch the fish, is the edge, right? So it's where the marsh and, and that kind of soft surface are meeting that you've got the, the most sea life and the most critters. Uh, and that's why I think this is very troubling is because that's where the oil tended to settle. So it came into the bay on day 46, and by the time the cleanup crew came out here to lay in boom and to uh, address the skimming, whatever, it was already in the marsh. And it kept coming in because it was a joke. It really was a joke. It was a horrendous sight. Orange, thick, blue. It just covered everything. The sun heated it up, you know, it scorched everything, turned everything black, and everything it touched, it killed. And that's plant life and animal life. And uh, the, the VOCs coming off of it, you know, to get out there in the early days, uh, you come back home with a headache. And I think those stories are happening. I mean, we're talking to shrimpers, and they're telling us these, these stories about the what they're seeing in the resource. But for whatever reason, that's not being picked up on by the national media, by the local media. It's, you know, there's a kind of nothing to see here approach. And the state very much wants, uh, wants us to be back in business as usual. And to some extent, I can understand that because, you know, bayou cultures, fishing communities, 
heavily dependent on the harvest from the waterways. A lot of business, you know, uh, extended from where it's caught, you know, are dependent on the harvest of the waterways. And yes, you want to get back to that life, but, you know, it's a big but, you want to ensure that it's safe, that you're not feeding a product to, you know, your family, your children, whatever, something that has the potential you know, to cause harm. And uh, that's the big question mark. You know, is it safe? And, uh, you know, when will we know? Because the, there's a credibility problem with a lot of the science. Uh, so when you have it going, you know, scientific information going through a political process, you can tell different stories with it. Right. And Noah, uh, as much as we, I hate to say this, has not been, I think, letting the data drive the, the decision, to, to, you know, the stories. It's been letting us, you know, political slant tell the stories. I personally do not feel that the priority is public safety. I don't. I think it's, you know, get back to the quote unquote norms, get back to doing uh, life as usual, and everything else will pan out, you know, eventually in the long run. Ten years from now, if somebody comes up with something, nobody will make the connections to this event. We just don't know what the recovery rate's going to be. The, I think the challenge is we're going to we're going to keep getting some news about this disaster. As more information comes out, we'll get these kind of process stories about the next finding from the commission or the next finding, you know, the next decision by Congress or the next thing the administration does. But they're just such a small story in this sea of news. In the 21st century, we're still here. In spite of all of the changes, in spite of all of the problems that we had to face, our, our tribe is still in the same area that we were almost a thousand years ago. I am a Mustang and my wheels are spinning in the dusty dirt. I am a shiny thing of power, useful goodness, and of worth. I am freedom from a stationary life and from the hurt. I am what separates the dream from the machine. I am her. I am her. I am the keys and the ignition of revolution. girls write for next. I think it would be a nice idea to support um, a charity or project that promotes the protection of rainforests or forests in general because I read this recent article that said that each minute we lose a forest area the size of 35 soccer fields. I think that the next cause that Acting Out Love should ride for is child abuse prevention and awareness. I work with abused and neglected kids and it's hard but rewarding work, but our facility is in a lot of trouble and I know that a lot of residential facilities are facing financial trouble as well. We would love to see a ride up and, up and down perhaps the east coast in support of the USO, ending up at Walter Reed Army Hospital where there are quite a few young men and women who would love to get a visit from two powerful young ladies who are committed to bringing not only attention to the environment, but to human suffering and to um, people who need a leg up. I think the next ride should be for the disaster that happened in Japan because of all the animals that probably drowned and all the people that lost their money in that nuclear explosion, and so it cost millions of dollars to repair that. The fact that you guys took your passion for a cause that you believed in and actually did something in the form of riding a motorcycle from LA to Louisiana, which is a bit crazy but awesome, is inspiring to me and you know makes me want to go out and do something and make a difference in something I believe in and have a passion for. For me that passion is a unknown 
relatively unknown genetic disorder called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, or EDS for short. I have EDS, and it what it does is it pretty much affects the structure and the formation of my collagen. So it affects everything from my joints to my skin to my organs and my blood vessels, which at times can be very frightening. Um, every day, people with EDS deal with everything from dislocations to chronic pain to aneurysms and even organ rupture at its worst. Something that's very personal to me living in a big city is the problem of homelessness. There are so many issues facing us right now in the United States in general, and um, I think there are a lot of problems, for instance, with the homeless in Atlanta, because that's where I live, and um, problems not caused by the homeless themselves, but by the government and the system we live in, and I think a lot of people are put in a situation that is incredibly difficult to overcome without, you know, rehabilitation programs and sustainable programs that really, really support people while they deal with, you know, issues of, of getting back into what we call, you know, the job world and, and finding a place to live and being able to maintain that because that's what's so huge. Um, a lot of people are put in a situation who, who are put in it by others. It's not something that they've chosen. And, um, you know, people need assistance, women and children in, in particular, and with something as basic as, you know, the ability to take a shower so that they can um, attain a job and, and keep it. Um, it's a huge social justice issue, and it's something that um, we can use this project as a vehicle to put a face on people in need and kind of take away that stigma and, and fear associated with being homeless because it's something that no one chooses and um, something that we can do something about and at least begin to do something about. And um, I definitely hope that you guys have great success in this and that you continue to use your passion to do something so fantastic. Thanks. Uh, one of my uh, main, I guess, interests or causes, I would have to say, is uh, as I was passing through Tupelo, uh, Mississippi, there was uh, uh, plenty of destruction from the tornadoes that passed through last week. Uh, there is uh, more destruction in Alabama. And uh, I just want to say that I think that while after the media is gone, there'll be a lot of people still rebuilding for a long time. And uh, maybe uh, with your efforts, they could get some more long-term exposure and uh, the extra help that's needed. I was really excited when I heard about this project, both as a huge Battlestar Galactica fan and as a New Orleanian, as someone who has researched and written about the Lake Pontchartrain Basin, and as someone who cares very deeply about the Gulf. Last October, I was able to attend the Gulf Restoration Network press conference at Voodoo Fest, and it was a really incredible experience for me to see Katie and Trisha alongside people like Dr. John and other musicians that I've grown up listening to. I'd like to see the Acting Outlaws continue their work in environmental issues. One that I care de deeply about is manatee endangerment. Manatees are disappearing rapidly and with very little fanfare. It would be wonderful to see them get a little bit more recognition and hopefully support. I'm looking forward to seeing what the Acting Outlaws do next. What first interested me in Acting Outlaws was their cause for the environment and the earth and what was happening to it and what had happened to it through the BP disaster and what could be done to help the environment. So I thought that was a great, great thing that they're doing on their road trip. And for a future cause, maybe they could do something for autism. Maybe something to raise awareness for domestic violence and child abuse. The statistics for domestic violence in this country are horrific when you fact that the news media virtually shows nothing about it. You hardly hear anything about it. It's not really part of our educational system when it comes to you know, family life and health and things. And so. Something like that I'd kind of like to see. I would love the both of you to come to Australia and do a ride for breast cancer awareness. Uh, I'm not too sure if you've already done breast cancer awareness. Um, anyway, it's something that's pretty close to my heart. As far as the next, next cause goes, uh, probably something with uh, helping no-kill animal shelters would be nice. There's a foundation called the Frank Lynch Foundation. And, you know, they're, they're fantastic and they're, oh, how do you explain it? Um, they're focusing on like the quality of life of the people who reside in the United States. I just wish more people within Hollywood would, do, would take the steps that they've taken and, and do the, the positive things that they've done. There's a, there's a lot of flooding going up on the Red River. A lot of people are losing their homes up there. Uh, awareness um, for uh, the 
Army Corps of Engineers and uh, the work that they've done out there to prevent the flooding, but still a lot of people have lost their homes. Um, and there's still the Lower Ninth Ward in, in New Orleans. Um, I think if you're going to give money to a charity, you might want to consider Kids Need to Read, a uh, charity that gives uh, uh, books to kids uh, in schools who are trying to learn to read and, and are at a disadvantage. That would be my recommendation so that you can get some more highly educated people to watch your show. A cause that I believe in is um, Operation Gratitude, which sends care packages to our soldiers. Um, it sounds like something so little, but it really is huge because some of these soldiers don't get packages. Um, and I think it's so important for them to know that they're cared for, um, that we're thinking about them. You know, they're over there for a year, a year and a half, and sometimes some of them never get packages, and it's that's not how it should be. My charity suggestion is RAIN, which is uh, the Rape, Abuse, Incest National Network. It's really, it's a charity that I feel really strongly about. They uh, do a lot of work against sexual assault, and, um, you know, working with uh, local rape crisis centers and uh, running hotlines and things like that. Any charity that you guys end up deciding to ride for, I'll be supporting it because you guys are badasses. I can't wait to see what you do next, and I uh, can't wait to see your documentary, which I might possibly be in. Trisha, Katie, thank you so much for going out of your way to help those who have been overlooked or forgotten.